Hello everyone, this is Jen and I make useful English Lit Study videos on Shakespeare, poetry, fiction, literary devices and more to help you get top grades in the subject. Following my previous video on the porter at Macbeth's castle, we are looking at another minor character in Macbeth in this video today, Lady Macduff. And by the way, if you haven't already watched my porter video, make sure that you check that out here after you watch this one. So Lady Macduff appears briefly and only in Act 4, Scene 2, when she is informed by Ross that her husband, Macduff, has fled England and left his family behind. And she's pissed, not happy at all. It's a fast-paced scene in which the primary emphasis is her exchange with her son, after which they are both murdered by Macbeth's assassins. Now, despite her thin presence in the play, she's an interesting character to explore because there's actually much more to her significance than meets the eye. At first read, Lady Macduff seems like a passive, helpless character, being this recipient of bad news and a victim of cruel fate, who first receives heartbreaking news about her husband's abandonment and is then brutally murdered along with her child. With this observation, we'll probably see her as a weaker foil to the other, much more prominent and domineering female character in the play, who is of course Lady Macbeth. But what if I were to be the devil's advocate and argue for the opposite view? Far from being a passive foil to Lady Macbeth, Lady Macduff could be viewed as a continuation of the matriarchal portrayal of women in this play. For all her apparent differences from Lady Macbeth, Lady Macduff is simply an alternative version of the assertive female archetype, one who embodies a similar feministic instinct as that possessed by Lady Macbeth. Now, if this strikes you as a surprising view of her characterization, then make sure that you watch on because in the rest of this video, I will be illustrating my argument with a close reading of two subliminal messages that we can glean from her speech. you describe the tone of Lady Macduff's words in the scene? Indignant? Resigned? Frustrated? Whichever one it is, it certainly doesn't seem to be sad or melancholic. Normally though, we'd expect a wife to be distraught about a husband's abrupt abandonment of the family. But if anything, Lady Macduff seems keener to berate Macduff than to lament the situation. We first see this from the aggressive tone in her repoust to Ross's defense of Macduff, when she says, Wisdom! To leave his wife, to leave his babe, his mansion and his titles in a place from whence himself does fly. Notice the forceful trochee of wisdom, and we know that trochee is a stress on stress unit, and also the accusatory anaphoric pattern of to leave his wife, to leave his babes, with the damning act of leave falling on the stressed syllable in the line. Now this impulse to chastise rather than to lament is likewise reflected in another trochaic let line, when Lady Macduff rails, all is the fear and nothing is the love. The contrasting superlatives of all and nothing also convey a cutting, absolute and unforgiving attitude on the wife's part. But Lady Macduff's tone embodies more than just anger. It is just as heavily pregnant with sarcasm and bitterness. This sarcastic streak comes through in her pointed observation of illogicalities throughout the scene. As in, as little is the wisdom where the flight so runs against all reason, fathered he is, and yet he's fatherless, in this earthly world where to do harm is often laudable, but to do good sometime accounted dangerous folly. There's an elegant irony in the standalone internal rhyme of wisdom, reason. Because Lady Macduff is essentially saying that her husband's abandonment of the family deviates precisely from rhyme or reason. And for all Lady Macduff's seeming frustration of her son's fatherlessness, the mirrored syntactic position of the words fathered and fatherless suggests that whether or not one has a father is but really two sides of the same coin, i.e. not that different. On this point, note Lady Macduff's repeated question to her son, how will thou do for a father? Which means, how will you live without a dad? 
But the nonchalant, flippant tone with which her son responds is perhaps instructive about Lady Macduff's real sentiments. He responds with a cheeky counter question. How will you do for a husband? And the second time with, if he were dead, you'd weep for him. So both statements imply that the son knows the mum is actually fine, not really all that upset, and will probably get over his father's absence rather quickly. In fact, the question, how will thou do for a father, could be read as a rhetorical question. The implicit message, know that despite not having a father, you still have a mother, and that alone should be more than enough. So this idea of you can do without a father reinforces the matriarchal undercurrent of Lady Macduff's characterization here, which we will further explore in our next point. By the way, guys, I'd massively appreciate it if you could hit the thumbs up button below, subscribe to my channel, and switch on that bell notification if you find this video helpful so far. This would really help me carry on making these useful English Lit Study videos so that you can get top grades in the subject and we can inspire more people to enjoy the study of literature. Throughout the scene, perhaps you'll notice that the bird stands out as an overarching motif. By the way, if you're not sure about what a motif is and how it's different from a symbol, then make sure that you check out my video here. What do we know about the parental dynamics of birds? The mother bird is largely responsible for taking care of her babes, with the father being away from the nest most of the day. So notice that in her first bird reference, Lady Macduff establishes the mother bird figure as a hero when she says, For the poor wren, the most diminutive of birds, will fight her young ones in her nest against the owl. So the message then is that if even the weakest female of the species can hold the fort and fight to the death for her children, then by contrast, the husband and father who flies in the sense of flees is cast in a cowardly light. Perhaps then we'll detect a hint of emasculation and disdain here, which should echo Lady Macbeth's earlier comments about her husband in Act 1. It's also interesting, though, that her son affirms the metaphorical identity proposed by the mum when he responds with, as birds do, mother, when she asks, how will you live without a father? But mother and son differ in their ideas of what it really means to live like a bird. For Lady Macduff, she sees her son as a trapped bird, one who's constantly at risk of being ensnared by the net, the line, the pitfall, the gin. The message here is a characteristically maternal one, which is that it's a dangerous world out there and therefore a mother's protection is necessary. Her son, however, sees being bird-like as a liberating experience and his mother's concerns as being somewhat overblown when he says, poor bird's traps are not set for. Don't worry so much, mum. In any case, through the bird motif, Lady Macduff heroizes the mother figure as the trusty, reliable protector of the home. And implicitly, but insistently, she's communicating a subliminal wish for her son to affirm the mother's power and strength. So in this scene, on the one hand, we see Lady Macduff's basic maternal instincts kick in as she genuinely worries about her son's future. But equally, she conveys a strong desire to fill up the now missing masculine vacuum in the family as the mother who can also be the father. And she wishes that her son sees and acknowledges this. And that's it for this close reading analysis, everyone. I hope it gives you some refreshing insights about Lady Macduff, who may be a minor character, but when considered alongside her seeming foil, Lady Macbeth, she could yield some surprisingly interesting insights about Shakespeare's portrayal of women in the play. As with all of my literary analysis videos, my goal is always to inspire you to come up with your own unique interpretation. So please do share your thoughts on what you think Lady Macduff's role and significance is. You could very well disagree with my reading here, and that is exactly the beauty of literary analysis. The more viewpoints, the merrier, as long as you're able to support it with textual evidence and sound argumentation. 
As always, please hit the thumbs up button below if you enjoyed this video so that YouTube knows to share this with other passionate top grade lit students like yourself so that I can carry on making these useful study videos for you down the line. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to my channel and switch on that bell notification so you don't miss out on any of my future weekly videos and I will see you very soon.